All right, so I just wanted to do a little overview of my uh, Atlas 10F lathe. Um, it's a 10 by 36 uh, lathe. I've had it for about, I don't know, six or eight months, maybe a little longer. But when I got it, it was disgusting. I had to tear it all apart, clean everything up, fix a few things. But uh, anyway, got it all cleaned up, painted, and I put back together. Made this base uh, on a decently sturdy toolbox. It's not the ideal thing, but got it leveled up. Got the bed leveled, shimmed up, and uh, it's turning fairly true. As true as I need it to turn out here in the shop. It's just a little hobby deal. But I've done a few things to it I want to show you. Um, most recently, just got done with this uh, power feed um, for the Z-axis for the lead screw. Uh, it's just a little project box I got from Radio Shack. And inside of it is a 12 volt power supply it puts out 10 amps or it's good for 10 amps and I got the power supply from eBay and also got this motor controller from eBay it's like a one package unit uh, it's it's good for 10 amps as well uh, I wired up a little double pole double, pole, double throw uh, toggle switch to reverse polarity essentially um, so Z negative would be the carriage left Z positive carriage right of course the travel speed that's the main power for the uh, power supply this is the main power for the motor controller so the travel speed is just a, a digital indicator for 0 to 100 scale, basically. Not necessarily RPM related. But uh, anyway, it, it's kind of infinite in that scale. So if you make sure I got it disengaged here. So that's going to be carriage moving left. And it powers this uh, windshield wiper motor that I got off of a Jeep Cherokee. Pretty much any windshield wiper motor will work, though. Um, got this idea from a magazine and a couple other guys have them on their lathes uh, on YouTube. Mr. Pete's got one. Just essentially does the same thing, just a little bit different way of doing it. Um, you can use several different motors, but this one's 12 volts. Fairly low amperage draw, uh, maybe 2 to 3 amps, maybe more. Um, and it's quite torquey, uh, so it's got plenty of torque to do what it needs to do. Made this little extension for the uh, lead screw on the lathe and just happened to have these pulleys. This is a uh, L pitch uh, timing belt pulley. Uh, this is a 20 tooth and that's a 10 tooth. You could go one to one if you wanted to on the gear ratio. That's just what I had. Figured I'd try it first before I bought something else. But anyway, it seems to be working really well. Like I said, it's pretty infinite as far as speeding it up or slowing it down. This is about, let's see, it's about 15 on that scale over there. And you can see it's just creeping. And believe it or not, it's got a fair amount of torque, even that slow. Plenty of torque to move the carriage. Um, and you can ramp it all the way up to 100, which is probably way faster than I'll ever use it, even for roughing, a roughing pass on some turning. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, power feed. Of course, you switch it, you know, if you go turn it off, and then the other way it just goes the opposite direction. Um, I just got finished with it. I haven't tidied up all the wires, but it's got everything on there. It needs to have a little plug in case I need to take the motor off. But the, the wires will get tidied up and kind of pinned in place so they don't get caught up in anything spinning. Uh, what else? I did a DRO on the tailstock. I've had several situations where I've needed to be pretty precise on the depth that I've been using the tailstock. Usually for, I've got a ER40 collet set that I can put in this tailstock with two, uh, two MT taper collet holder, and I'll use it for counter boring stuff with the end mill or something like that. And I've had to have pretty accurate stuff as far as depth, and it's kind of hard to do with this this normal stock, you know, just regular scale on the top of the the uh, ram there. But that's the uh, <coughs> DRO setup. It's all eye gauging, nothing spectacular. It's cheap. It's on eBay, and it works really well. So I'm happy with it. Of course, tail stock, x-axis, z-axis. Um, the the z-axis, you can see the scale right back here on the back of the bed, and it runs the full length. Essentially, it's the gauges or the actual reader. The head is underneath here on the carriage, and it goes, the wiring and all goes in this plastic chain, which keeps everything nice and neat. Uh, the scale and reader for the x-axis is right under this plate right here that I made, just a piece of half inch thick aluminum. Pretty stout. It's mounted on top of the uh, cross slide there. 
it hides the scale and keeps the waves nice and clean and all the chips out of the lead screw. It also has a, if it was steel, it'd be great because I could use it for uh, mounting a mag base, you know, just the indicator base. But I didn't really think that through. So it's aluminum. It looks nice. It's pretty. But uh, anyway, I usually use this thing anyway. I just made this holder on the uh, on the tool holder here. Just threw that, made that in the mill. And indicator mounts to that. I got the center height adjusted so I can indicate pretty much any standard rod or whatever in the lathe really easily just by throwing it in the tool holder. So yeah, that's that. Uh, what else have I done? Just a quick change tool post holder. My buddy Joe made this pretty sweet uh, handle here for me instead of the a nut that goes on there. You have to hunt a wrench every time. So this makes it a lot easier just, you know, do it by hand. But uh, yeah, the reason I did the power feed, or one of the reasons, is because this is another pretty big project that, that uh, Joe and I have been working on. Um, this is a quick change gearbox and it's not quite finished yet. Um, mine is not. Joe's is actually finished and he's using his without any real issues. But uh, this is something we made through some really old plans that are that leave a lot to be desired, to be honest. So we've had to re-engineer a bunch of things, but it's working out. I just got to get back on this project and finish up. It's, it's actually about 80% done. I just need to finish up a few things and put it all together. But anyway... Uh, the reason I did the power feed is because when I'm just doing normal turning, like on a shaft, I don't want to have to run my lead screw through this entire uh, transmission, basically. Uh, all these, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more gears that aren't in here yet that go in here. And it, it creates a lot of noise, uh, creates wear and tear on the gears themselves, you know, just on this whole system. Everybody knows how, how uh, soft and not very durable, the stock gears on our Atlas. So I try to eliminate that if I can. So what I end up doing is putting this, this is normally your, your uh, direction changer left and right. I put it in neutral and then I just run my lead screw. Of course, it's currently still turning because I got it running, but that way this thing just runs without actually going through the transmission. And you just disengage it and engage it normally with the uh, carriage feed right there. But yeah, so, you know, these things need as much horsepower as they can get. So to eliminate all this gear and stuff through the transmission, it also maybe puts a little more power to the spindle. At least that's what I like to think. But uh, it works really well so far. Um, of course, if I want to, the reason I have all this stuff is so I can do threading. Pretty much infinite amount of thread pitches I can get on this thing. And uh, when I do threading, what I'll just do is, Come back here, disengage the belt, and of course it'll be off then. But uh, once I do that, then I can use the uh, quick change gearbox just like I normally would. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll do a quick cut. Video's getting kind of long, but this is some 304 stainless rod that I've got here. I'll uh, do a quick cut, see what it looks like. Um, I'll dial it in to maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 thousandths. There's 17. We'll go with that. Um, got it going left. I'll we'll put it on maybe 20 for now just to see. It should be a nice slow cut. It should be a decent finish. See what happens. So I just dis I just engaged the uh, the carriage here. I don't know if you can see that really well. The sun's kind of coming in the window there. It's got a pretty good finish on it. It's just a generic uh, insert, nothing special. Um, and you can see this hand wheel. It's just creeping. And I could actually go a little slower than that if I wanted to. But that finish seems to be working out pretty well. We'll back this thing out a little bit on the X and see if we can turn up the feed rate a little bit. We'll just say ten thousandths. So I'll turn this up to I don't know seventy-five. And I'm sure I can go a little deeper cut than that. I just wanted to show you for the purpose of how how fast it's cutting now. There's a hundred right there. She's moving along pretty good. I'll probably never need it that fast. 
but I guess if you're doing a lot of roughing passes on some aluminum or something, you can hog out pretty quick and then come back and finish it up. So I'll slow it down again to 20. There's 20. You can see that the finish, surface finish, definitely changes quite a lot. Of course, 304 stainless is a little gummy anyway, so it, it doesn't doesn't like a lot of fast stuff. Well, that's a pretty decent finish, just, just right there. I'll slow it down a little bit more. It's down to 10 right there, so. You see it's really dialing it in now. It's just barely creeping along. But even with that, you can see how much better the surface finish is. And for a finish pass, that'd be perfect. In my opinion. So anyway, we'll disengage. Um, yeah, you can leave this thing running. As long as you disengage the carriage, nothing's going to happen. Uh, or if you want to cut it off, just flip it down and you're good to go. I got a little fancy with the engraving on the CNC mill. But yeah. I changed out the hand wheels for some larger wheels. I didn't like the little tiny ones. Um, I had actually had the the uh, hand wheels that were on my CNC mill before I changed it to CNC, I just kept them and actually works out really well. It's a nice big, big wheel there for the carriage for moving fast stuff. But that's it. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot.